I remember years ago, you couldn't see women disrobed as they are today. Even if there were homosexuals in our community, they didn't parade themselves before the world. They would hide it because the average person would not countenance homosexuality or lesbianism. But look at Hollywood, how it promotes it. Look at how cross-dressing is being uh, advised and many great black strong men have been asked to put on women's clothes. For what? They're selling a thought to black people that it's all right to be other than yourself. You remember when I spoke of Medea, I never saw brother Tyler Perry as a man that was promoting cross-dressing. I saw him promoting Medea, that great woman in the life of black people. Of course, it was done in a comic way, but nevertheless, the scriptures of the Bible teach against women dressing like men, and it teaches against men dressing like women. And even in the Old Testament, the punishment for so doing was death under the law of Moses. Hollywood, you all know the Torah. You know what God has said, but you are promoting evil. You are promoting that which is against the will and the way of God, and you're doing it purposely. Not so much for your people, but you know that we are to receive the kingdom after God takes it from you. And you hate the fact that our rule is going to come whether you like it or not. The kingdom will be taken from you and given to this rejected stone, this black man that God has chosen to be his people. You know this, so you want to feed us all the filth that we can eat, all the debauchery that we can stand, so you are now bringing the privacy of sex into public a view in your movies, in your magazines, in your newspapers. It's all about sex, titillating the people of America, particularly our young people, to get involved in the kind of behavior that they can uh, see on internet, they can see it in the movies, and it's very difficult for parents even to close their children off from the filth that is abounding in the society. Even down to cartoons, you are promoting that which is against the will and commandments of God. You are promoting lying, you're promoting stealing, you're promoting cross-dressing, you're promoting lesbianism and homosexuality sexuality you are doing this purposely and the scripture says Satan has made evil fair seeming to the people so we are so confused today we think it's all right because the scripture says God is love and I'm in love and love has to be right because love is of God See how you have deceived yourself. And now you will be angry with me and say, oh Farrakhan, you're homophobic. You hate gay people and lesbians. That's false. I'm in love with my people. I'm in love with you regardless of how you present yourself. I have never disrespected you. I have had 
teachers of my violin that are gay. I never disrespected them, nor did they disrespect themselves in my presence. I was educated by a gay person in Detroit because I spoke ugly about uh, lesbianism and homosexuality and he was hurt and when I came to Detroit he asked to see me and I remember his listening to my lecture and he came to the private quarters that I had and I let him in and we sat and talked and he wanted to change his way of life and he gave me guidance in he didn't know he was guiding me but he was telling me about the language that I used it was the same with rabbis that I sat down and talked with they had dinner in my home and they told me that some of my language was hurtful to them they didn't know it but later I told this former chief rabbi dean of the rabbis in Chicago that what he told me I thought about it I'm not interested in making white people enemies of ours I'm not interested in stirring up hatred in you for me or for us but I have to give you the message whether you hear or forbear so I try now to be more careful in the way I speak because it is not my desire to hurt your feelings but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says truth hurts but it only hurts the guilty and I remember brother Malcolm one day when he was lecturing at a college and uh, the people started hissing the Caucasians against him and he said oh that's what your father did in the garden and he said whenever a man throws a stone in a pack of dogs the only one that hollers is the one that gets hit and today if I don't preach the truth to try to save your life I will lose mine and if I don't warn you of what the consequences are and you continue in what you're doing with no desire even to change because you think you are living right this enemy is a scientist of evil he's studying bacteriology and chemistry in such a way that he can change you chemically to think you are what you are not He's a wise Satan. That's who you're dealing with. You're not dealing with just common wicked man. You're dealing with the Satan, the God of this world. And he's after you, black man and woman, to take you down with him when he goes. Let me go on with that subject because the strong black men are being asked by Hollywood to put on dresses. Strong black men are offered lots of money. I won't name the person, but the manager of a certain strong black man came to me and begged me, please talk to the one that I'm managing, for they have offered him $15 million to cross dress to dress like a woman in a movie and I don't want him to do that could you talk with him but the scripture says money answereth all things and so 15 million dollars a man will put on a dress in a heartbeat well white people put on dresses too but they're not after their own they're after you you remember Dave Chappelle? How he said that uh, he was in his dressing room and when he took a break and went back in his dressing room, there was a dress on the uh, door and he thought he was in the wrong uh, place. And then a man came in and said, oh, we got a real funny scene. 
and, and, and it's, a, it's around this dress. Dave, put on the dress. Dave said, I, I, I'm not putting on the dress. That man went out and then uh, a higher ranking person came and told Dave, oh Dave, it's just a, a short scene, but it is hilarious and it will go over big in the audience. And Dave then said, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't want to put on a dress. Then the producer himself came and said, uh, Dave, I mean, it's really a funny scene. Come on, Dave. And he said, I'm sorry, I can't put on that dress. And he said, when they left, they came back within a very short time. They had already written the real scene, but they wanted to get him to put on a dress because what they're selling, black brother, is that they want you to be so wrapped up in what they're wrapped up in that you will stick your fingers in your ear when you hear the warning and the call of God. And when you do that, you will go down to hell with your enemies. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, the enemy is after you. This generation shall not pass before all these things come to pass. As it is written in the scriptures, resist the devil and he will flee from you. But you're acting so weak that when you know he's leading you to something that you should not do, you don't resist because you want the fame, you want the money, you want the job, you want nearness to your enemies. Remember how Satan took Jesus up on a mountain and showed him all of the cities that he could have if only he would bow down to Satan. Mountain here means he takes you up to a high place because that's where you want to be in sport, in play, in music, in science, in medicine. You want to be on the mountain top. But the man that's taking you there is the God of this world. And as he said to Jesus, if you would bow down and worship me, you can have all of this. But Jesus had the strength to say to Satan, get thee behind me, Satan. And that is where Satan belongs. He doesn't belong in front of you, leading you. You need to put him not only behind you, but put him out of the equation altogether. God is present today. And if you really want to go up in strength and power and wealth and righteousness, remember Satan only promises you to deceive you.